So what we will learn today are, are much more specific programs for specific, specific software, for specific problem. Uh, they are much more close. So if you use them, it's usually much easier to use. It's much, uh, sometimes they are much more reliable and, and give uh, an easier to interpret results. But if you have a problem, it's, it's much uh, harder to, to do the troubleshooting. And that's why I was thinking about uh, speaking first about the hard way, first speaking about step by step, uh, how you can do then a assembly or realignment. And then uh, if you have problem with these tools, then, then you can go back and, and find out what uh, went wrong. Uh, I was thinking about discussing the, uh, the challenges on Thursday. So, so I, I will give you new challenges in every Thursday and you will always have one week to think about it and work on it. And I think we should maybe spend like 20, 30 minutes uh, uh, from the Thursday's course to, to go through the steps. Maybe it's just 10 or 15 minutes. It depends on the, on the problem. Uh, right, uh, so uh, the first uh, program we will speak about today is the unicycler. It's not, uh, not because it's, it's way much better than anything else in, in, in assembling genomes. Actually, it's not bad, uh, but also the installation type is a bit more challenging and I, would, I wanted to show you how you can uh, uh, handle an installation like this uh, and what are those uh, problems you can, you can face uh, during the, the installation. So if you just Google the, the unicycler, and probably uh, like assembly, uh, and actually I think it, it's better to go from, oh, I can, is it the same one as, yeah, it is the same one. Uh, so, as you can see, as, as always, there are so many dependencies here again. Uh, and you cannot really install it the easy way. So when you see a GitHub cloning thing, that's only, that only means that you will download the Unicycler program itself. Uh, but as uh, the installation requirement says, uh, some of the dependencies can be removed during the, the running of the pipeline. But otherwise, Unicycle expects these tools to be available in path. And this is the first thing what we have to discuss today. Uh, what is the path? Because you will find this very often when you, when you try to install, when you try to run a program. So the easiest way to, uh, to understand is it is if you are on your own uh, machine, on your uh, laptop, if you try to run your, for example, Microsoft Word. You cannot just simply run it from anywhere. Uh, I don't know what's the name of the application. Probably uh, some kind of Word thing, but you cannot really just open a terminal and say uh, Word or MS Word because it won't run. Because probably uh, these applications are not uh, always in your path. And what is the path? Uh, so if we are logging into our server, There, is, uh, there are some default uh, uh, places uh, in, in, within the Linux uh, file system that you always see. So if there are any executable programs there, uh, you don't have to be there to execute. The simple, just if you say ls, this is an application, this is a program uh, that will give you a list in your directory, but ls is not there in your Folder. I don't see the ls here. I don't see any executable ls here. So to see where the ls is, you can you have you can say which ls, and then it says that oh the ls program itself is actually in slash bin uh, directory. So if you now list the contents of the bin directory, then you will see that there are a lot of different green. For me, it's green. I, I think uh, maybe it's for you as well. Uh, uh, 
that are built in Linux programs. We already uh, found, uh, uh, met with, with Nano, for example, it's, it's also here, or CP to copy things, or less to look into files. So these are the actual programs you are running when you say less, or when you say ls, or when you say pwd. But they are not in your directory, they are in a, in a central place. Uh, if you install something as a, as, an, as, a, as a root, as an administrator of the server, sometimes it is going into this uh, directory as well. So if you put anything here, then you can, you can run it from anywhere. But the problem is that in default, I think the bin folder is not uh, writable for anyone. So only the root can write into this directory. If you look at uh, this bin directory, the upper one, yeah, it is only writable for the root and not anyone else. So you cannot, cannot put in programs to the bin directory. So, uh, but maybe, maybe I want to use Blast or you want to use Spades or you want to use uh, uh, any other programs from anywhere where you are, not you know, when we are in our scratch directory, what we did with the, uh, for example, with the spades, we had to say, okay, I want to run from the spades, and I know that it is in my home directory and in the uh, spades folder and inside the bin folder, and there, there is a spades dot. There should be a space.pi there. Yeah, maybe it's not executable. You have to say Python. But anyway, uh, it is not, not there. So always have to give this whole uh, uh, path to run this program. But if you want to run Unicycler, you have to have a SAM tools executable. You have to have a tblast n. So you have to have the blast installed and you have to be able to run that. You have to be able to run the spades PI from anywhere. So uh, the alternative way you can do is that you can, you can uh, define alternative paths. So first of all, how do you know uh, what are those folders where, where you can keep your executable files? If you say ENV, uh, which is, stands for environment, uh, on the Linux machine. It's all also working on a Mac, of course, Mac terminal. And you can see that there are so many lines here, but the basic syntax is that you have a word and then an equal sign and then something else. Here we have a word, an equal sign, and then a lot of other things. Again, one thing, an equal sign. So what you see here, all the things uh, before the equal sign, of course, this is only multiple lines because my my window is not big enough, but each line is starting with a variable name, which is actually an environmental variable. And then uh, we have the value for that environmental variable. For you, for example, the user equals to bioinf. For me, it is user equals to Ubuntu. So that's how my terminal knows that my username is Ubuntu. Uh, I am at the moment in my scratch directory. There is an environmental variable called pwd, which is uh, storing my actual place where I am in the Linux file system. And among all of these uh, different variables, uh, we have the path variable here. And if you look at this, of course, the uh, uh, everything, there are different things. So this is a list actually, and, and the, the elements of the list are separated by, by columns. So everything that in your slash home slash Ubuntu slash makeonda slash bin directory, they will be uh, seen from anywhere. So if I'm just listing this directory now, this is where, Minicon, uh, where the conda is putting in 
a lot of programs to the dependencies. As you can see, I already have a lot of things here. Maybe I have the Blast, yeah, I already have the Blast N. So I don't have to install Blast N, for example, for the unicycler. I can just simply say Blast N from anywhere and it is working. Of course, there is nothing here, but the program is working. It doesn't tell me that uh, uh, it's not, it's not a, uh, a command. This is, of course, not a command. So if we go back to the uh, path variable and we only want to look at what is in our path, so we don't want to see the whole uh, list of environmental variables, uh, then we can just see uh, this here. Uh, and as I, as I told you, I, the, the bin is there. Uh, it's actually the user as bin and the user bin, which is there. Probably there is a link in the user bin to, oh no, the slash bin is there as well. So that's why we can run ls. That's why we can uh, run cp uh, or less from anywhere because uh, it is here as a path. So if you want to use the states from anywhere, you just have to put your states uh, binary directory here into this. And of course, that's uh, a question, how can you do that? Uh, so uh, this is done by the export command. So uh, where was it? Uh, it was actually... Uh, this was it. Let's go there. Geoma, please do this with me. Uh, also, um, it's important to, 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 to say that here that if you do something with export, it will only uh, last until you are uh, logging out from that terminal. So if Geoma does this, it will work for her, but it will not work for anyone else. Uh, and if she logs out and she log in, logs in back, it, it won't work for her again. For that, we have to put this line to somewhere else. I will tell you where, of course. But now we have this directory. Can, we can use the pwd to list this directory. So we just copy this. And we want to uh, uh, put this path among these. So what we have to do is I have to say path other path equals to so what you do here is that uh, you are redefining your path variable. Uh, you are uh, giving a new value. The new value will be this thing, which is our uh, directory, a semicolon, and the old value of the path variable. Of course, if I do something like this, this can be very dangerous. Uh, of course, it's only dangerous until you are logging out. Because if I do this, I will overwrite the whole uh, uh, content of this. I, I, can, I can actually show you. Almost. Do I have to? Well, maybe I already, because the export is. This is the way how it, okay, there is no dollar. So if I do this and now I say n to see my environmental variables, I cannot see because I, even the nth command 
is not in my path because I really find the whole path. So I can say slash user slash bin slash n. And then I can see that my path variable, don't do this after me, Chioma, or if you did, you have to log out and log in back, but it's, it's okay. <laughs> but as you can see, my path is this. So I, I cannot use anything anymore that was in, for example, the slash bin directory. I cannot say ls because there is no ls command anymore uh, for me. So I just have to log out and log back in. And everything went back to normal because that export comment was only affecting my uh, that that session, that uh, login session for me. But if you do something like this, and here you have to say dollar pound, uh, then you will just put into the list your new path. So if I'm now Uh, looking at my path, that you can see that everything is there and also my new thing is there. So we will have to do something like, like this when we install all the requirements uh, for Unicycler. Uh, to avoid uh, doing this again and again, you can put this line into your dot uh, rc file <clears throat> if you are going to your main directory and you say ls minus, just first say ls. Uh, there is nothing here which is called dot bash rc, but if you say ls minus la, then you will see that we have that file there. This file, I hope you have that file as well. Uh, the reason why we haven't seen all these files starting with a dot, uh, because that is the default hidden file in the Linux file systems. So in, in default, ls doesn't list hidden files, but if you looking at the manual of ls, if you use the minus a, then it will also list those files that are starting with a dot. The l is only therefore making the list more detailed. I can also say ls minus a, and then you will just see the files without the creation date and all the other things. So, so we have the bash rc file here. This is a text file, so you can easily edit with any kind of text editor. Before I edit it, I just go back and copy this. Uh, do you follow me, Shioma? Yes, I'm following. Okay, okay. Uh, so I just copied this export command when I uh, exported the, the uh, spades path. And what I will do is I will edit with nano, the dot bash rc. Uh, this should be done only by Chioma because all the bioinfuser bio have only one bash rc file, of course. Uh, this is sometimes quite long. Uh, I think I think the, the bioin bash rc file is a bit smaller because of my uh, uh, technical problem I did, you know, when I deleted the folder, but I think uh, at least it should contain uh, this part, the conda initialized part. This is, this is the first thing which is running to initialize the Conda environment. So actually what is inside this Bosch uh, RC file, this is like a startup folder for a Windows. So everything you, you put in here uh, will be executed when you are logging in. Every time you log in, this will be executed. So if you put this here, but you also put here uh, something like, uh, and just put the export line there, Chioma, you don't have to put this. Something like this, and I am now saving it, Control O and Control X to exit, and I 
log out and log in back, then you can see here that uh, it also told me hello because I put an extra line in the Bosch RC file saying hello. This is the uh, Linux uh, way of saying anything in your uh, standard output. Of course, you cannot really see that this was executed, but uh, it was. I mean, you, you don't see that it's, there's nothing on your, on your terminal. But if you look at your path variable, or just simply say, I'm in, in this folder, where there is no space PI. There is no space. Sorry, I just need to get out of this. Um... So you have, to, you have to press the Control O and then Enter to save and control X to, to quit. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's not, it's not working like this, but I think it will work uh, with the, uh, uh, it's not strange it's not working like this. Is it there? Yes, it is there. Okay, so uh, let's try to install this program. So what you, we have to do first, uh, I think I can just try to make the, the space PI executable. Okay, it will work like that. Uh, so, do this with me, uh, Chioma, please. So go into the, your space uh, 3.14.1 Linux and bin folder and say chmod u plus x pi. So we make it, uh, we made it executable now. Uh, which means if we are going back to our main folder, we can run the space from anywhere. Okay. Just because we have it there. Uh, maybe you have to log out and log in again. Uh, Chuma, I don't know if you have uh, this in your path, but if you change the mode of the space.pi, yeah, I don't, I don't, I tried the CD, but it didn't said so, no. So if you are in your home directory, just mm. press CD and then CD space 3.14.1 and win. Do you have it? No, it's not in my my computer, don't worry. I think I'll put in that. It's froze a bit. The space is there. The folder is there. Yeah. So if you are in this bin directory, you just have to say ch mode u plus x space dot pi. Yep. Okay, so uh, because what we have to do, we have to go through the whole list here and check if we have everything. Uh, we should have Python. That's, I think that's not a problem. Uh, the Python is Python or Python free. Python is there. Uh, don't, don't do this with me. <laughs> okay, so Python is there, which means that it will be there for you as well and usually Python 3 is there as well, but in default, the Python is a Python 3.7 version, so it will be okay. So we are going through the list. Of course, we have a Linux, so we have the Python 3.4 or later. If you just want to look at the version, you just have to say Python minus V probably, yeah, minus capital V, and then you can see that you have a Python 3.7.6. So this is okay, uh, ticked. Uh, we will need uh, a C compiler. Uh, I, I guess that we have a GCC. Yes, no. 
Uh, you don't have to do this. Uh, GCC is something which should be there on all Linux uh, installations, but this server is too young, so it haven't uh, the GCC wasn't installed yet. Uh, now I'm inst installing it, and the GCC will be accessible for everyone. Uh, hopefully, uh, because uh, we are now installing GCC, we don't have to do anything of these other ones because this is GCC or Clang or ICC. We will use the GCC. So GCC is a C++ compiler. It will make uh, the binary executable program from the source code, which is the program file itself. So now we have the GCC. Uh, we don't, we didn't uh, give any files, but we have the GCC now. So that's ticked as well. Setup tools. Uh, I don't know what is this, but I can imagine this is also something uh, a Linux something. check if I can install it centrally. No, I can't. Uh, you have to do this together with me because I think this is only, uh, is this, okay, don't, don't do this yet. Let me just check if, if I'm, if I'm installing it, I think if I'm installing with pip, it's only installing into my own. Hmm. But it's not it's, it's not running like this uh, okay we will see if, if it's not running for you then you just have to do the same kind of install what i did before uh spades now the spades is there so we have the spades now uh, we have to install raccoon as well we won't use raccoon but we will uh, install it uh, are you on this the same site Achioma? yes i am Union Cycler, okay, then just uh, let's open it in a new tab and see how we can install Raccoon. So Raccoon is, uh, is an assembler for, for long reads, which we don't have at the moment, but uh, oh, oh my God, we have to install this, is, this as well like this, oh, okay. Right, uh, okay, let's go back to our home directory. This is a very nice exercise how to install a program which is not as user friendly as all uh, the uh, Conda installs from, from Torstein, for example. Uh, so what we have to do, we have to first download this. Uh, we only need GCC and CMake, so that will be, I think, okay. Let me check if we have CMake. Again, you don't have to do this, uh, but I will just install CMake as well, which is another program to compile programs. It should be on. Okay, we have it now. So copy this first line. This is just to download the uh, all the files needed for the installation from Raccoon and paste it here. Uh, you should be in your in your main directory. So just uh, say CD if you are not there yet, in your home directory, and then uh, copy this. Yeah. 
Is it doing for you as well? Yep. Downloading, okay. So many things are downloaded. That's interesting. So it seems that there are quite a lot of dependencies as well here, <clears throat> which are downloaded. But we also have to make <clears throat> the final executable from it. While it is downloading, I just bring a glass of water. At least you see now why I <clears throat> told you before that if you have a chance to install something with Conda, then do the Conda install. Because otherwise you have to go through half hour of downloading and dependency checks. It is done for me. Done. Uh, okay. So it says that we should go into the uh, CD and the rac raccoon folder. So CD raccoon. And then we have to make a build directory. MKDIR. Field. We have to go into this directory. And just simply copy this uh, with the two dots as well at the end. So the two dots means that it, it will uh, do all these uh, processes uh, based on something which is one folder up, which is the, uh, sometimes you remember that when we, when we copied files, we usually say CP, uh, a file from somewhere else, and then dot at the end, which means that we are copying uh, something to there where we are. But if you say dot dot, that means that you are referring to your parent folder. So it's actually the raccoon folder record folder has all those things which uh, CMake needs. So just say, just simply copy this CMake and be sure that the two dots are at the end and press enter. And we have something missing already. There is no CMake uh, CXX compiler. Uh, probably I have to install something else as well together with the CMake. Probably maybe a development package. No. There is a build essential package I have to install. Hopefully. Okay, it's working now. So you can restart as well. Uh, the CMake command, this will uh, finish very fast because the, this is just checking if everything is there. So always when you are uh, compiling uh, a binary program from the source, you usually have to make checks before you do it, checking if everything is there for to the compilation. And, and luckily everything is done and found and yes, so build files have been written to here, which means that we can execute the, the last command, which is make. It's actually not extremely long, it seems, from the percentage. Mm -hmm. Is it working for you as well? Yes, it is. OK, perfect. There will be a lot of warnings and notes, just ignore them. Uh, while it is only purple and blue, it's okay. If it starts turning into red, that's a problem. <laughs> okay, so for me, uh, it, is, it says that it's, uh, it's done. And it also says here that after successful installation, executable named Raccoon will appear in uh, build, sla uh, build slash bin. Uh, so again, we have the program. So if you list your 
bin folder here, you have the raccoon there. Uh, but again, this won't be visible. As you remember, for the unicycler, which, which we are now installing, and we are just here at this point yet, uh, it says that it has to be accept, uh, accessed from anywhere. So if I'm here in my in my main folder and I say raccoon, uh, it has to be. Oh, it's actually not raccoon. It's raccoon. Or raccoon. Uh, so it's not accessible from here. So again, what we have to do is that we have to put this into our path variable, into our environmental vari variable. So the best thing what we can do, we are going back to our raccoon. Uh, build. build. Can you decrease the volume, or I can? Oh, I think we can all hear myself again. Yeah, it's all muted now. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's Chioma, but Chioma shouldn't be booted because sometimes I am asking her. And I think it was her speaker together with her microphone. No, that wasn't me because I'd been on mute. Okay, then it was fine. Okay, okay. Anyway, it was my, myself. <laughs> right, so if you go back to your raccoon build bin folder, if you are not there, and you say pwd, then copy this to your uh, uh, clipboard. And let's go back to our uh, main folder and again let's edit the dot wash rc file and go back to that line which you in yeah, sorry try going back to the raccoon folder okay so if you are in your main directory in, the, in your home cd then you just have to change change directory raccoon build and bin. And this is where you can or, or just simply copy the the line from my from, from my screen. Uh, that's okay as well. So you have exactly the same thing exact except you have bioinf here instead of Ubuntu. So if we now if you go back to your home directory with CD and you add the home directory. Are you there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you are uh, editing. editing the bash RC file. Sorry, just, um, just a moment. Okay, I will slow down a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I'm at the home directory, bioinf, bioinf course, and I did the CD um, raccoon slash build slash um, bin, and it's saying no such file or directory. Oh, it's there. Did you say uh, CD slash raccoon or CD raccoon like this? CD raccoon slash. Mm -hmm. There, oh, it's build and bin. So I can I can even go into your dot dot slash bin no bioin raccoon build bin. It is there. How to do that again? Just just try this like 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 here on my screen. Yeah. Same thing, maybe I should show you my, I don't know if I can show you my, but at the, yeah, it's saying no such file or directory. I don't know why I can't access it. And it's exactly the same thing I've typed in. Uh, that's a good question, let's see. Because I worked in my own folder, so I, 
Let me show that you are the owner of the raccoon. Yeah, it's the diving um, the build. The build folder is also yours and the bin folder. Oh, okay, okay, I see. No, sorry, that's build, not bin. Build and the bin folder as well. Uh, so it's a bit strange. Let, let's just uh, uh, edit the Bosch RC file now. Right in, and then then you can log out and log in again, and maybe it will just uh, uh, repair everything. Okay, just go back to the to your home folder, and let's edit our dot rc file. And let's go down to the bottom. And here, when we put in the spades before, let's just put here. Sorry, just just go back a bit, please. Sorry. Did you did you open the? No, I've just come back to my home folder. Okay, and just nano dot rc. Okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And and search that line with which you uh, put in before with the spades path. So you should have something like this: the export path equals to uh, space blah blah blah. There. Yeah. Okay. And here, just simply write in the same thing I have on my screen instead of, uh, but it's except. Uh, putting bioinf here. So it's slash home slash bioinf slash raccoon or raccoon slash beard slash bean. And okay. then a okay. colon. Sorry? I've just copied that like you said. Okay, okay. that's perfect. Okay. And a colon. So uh, that's what I will separate from the spades part. And if it's done, then again, uh, hold on, hold on, sorry. Okay, <laughs> just push Control O, save. Sorry, everyone. Just need to be sure that I don't make any mistake. Yeah, so after the. Um, yeah. And just press Control O if it's done to save, and then Control X to exit. Right, just press Control O to save. Yeah, okay. And then Control X to go out. I, I, I think it's. I'm, I'm sure it's perfect, so, yeah. <laughs> oh! It is, okay, so now we have a lot of space there, as far as I see. But the raccoon is not there yet. Did you press the control O and enter? Yeah, control O, enter. Can you see it? Save it. Oh yeah, yeah it, much, it looks much better now. Uh, okay, I think that's okay. Uh, we have some extra uh, spades up in the beginning of the file, but it's okay. Okay, so uh, if you if you press Control X to exit, uh, and you want to start Raccoon now, of course it won't start. But if you log out, and you log back in. Sorry, the shortcut for log out is just say log out, right? Yeah, or control D. Control D is the uh, the short key for logging out. And then you can just restart your, your party. And then uh, 
for me the raccoon is working uh, this is working for all of all of us uh, all of all of you uh, even if uh, you, are, you didn't do what uh, Chioma did but you also have to log out first and log in back again because now it will be in your path is it working for you yeah I'm oh. all fine what do you mean so if you log in and just say recon in your home directory it should give you the uh, an error missing in boot file but then the help for the recon It tells me command recon not found. And did you log out and log in back? Log yeah. back in. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Is there? I can I can actually see it when I do the ls, but when I type the raccoon, it doesn't. It just comes back as. Oh yeah, uh, there is a problem on the uh, in this file. So if you nano again uh, your your bosh rc, can you do it? Nano dot bosh rc. Uh, the problem is that you have the dollar sign there. So first, what you have to do, uh, let me just uh, open your yours. So you have to delete these two two lines from the beginning because you don't need to uh, uh, repeat. So yeah, uh, I did the nano dot bash rc, and it says the the bash rc is being edited. Ah. Someone else is working on it. Okay, please close your your editings on the Bash RC. It's only it should only be done uh, by Chioma. <laughs> someone else is, or maybe it's because I'm looking at it. No, I think someone else is looking at. It. So should I just say yes? Uh, uh, that was stupid. Well, let's see. Okay, uh, I didn't want to do this. Grab. Uh, just uh, what's what's the question? If you want to overwrite or so file dot bash rc has been edited by bioinfo with nano two point nine point three pid three one two eight. Continue. Yeah, continue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's only you now. Yeah. Okay. Is anything so it's okay? So delete the two. Yes, yeah, so delete the first two lines and also delete delete these things here because they are not needed anymore. Uh, not the hello. <laughs> mm -hmm. And also just delete the dollar sign uh, here uh, from in front of the path. It should remain here at the end the, the dollar sign is okay here but here you don't have to use the dollar sign just the name of the uh, the variable without the dollar sign this is how you uh, uh, assign values but this is how you call the variable okay so delete these two lines delete those two lines at the beginning and just delete this dollar sign here And if it's done, mm -hmm. again, control O, enter, and control X. And tell me if it's done. Yeah. Okay, yeah, much better. And now you can uh, log out and log back in, and everyone else can do it. And hopefully, if you say recon, then you will get back an error message and the help. Yeah. Okay. So another tick. We are at the half of, we are just at the half of the list. 
Uh, I'm sorry if, it, if this is a bit boring, but I just wanted to show you how, really how hard it is to install something if you have to install everything one by one. Okay, I think we have the bow tie and SAM tools and blast. Uh, I think uh, we already used bow tie too. If you just say bow tie two, uh, for me it is working because the help is coming out. Do you have the bow tie too as well? Yes. Okay. I know that we have the blast, but let's just check if we have the blast n command. We have. And we also check the make blast db. Which we also have, but of course it's not the usage. Okay, so tick tick. We have the SAM tools, I think we installed uh, last time. So if you say SAM tools, then you should have again the help of the SAM tools. Yep. Perfect. We only have to do two other things. Uh, the Java or Java, uh, I'm not sure we have it. Oh, we have. That's good. Do you have it too? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, if you want to see where is this uh, Java, then we can always check with the witch. And as it's, of course, it is in our Miniconda environment. So it was installed with one of, by one of the previous programs we installed with the Conda uh, installation. So that's here as well. So there is only one left, this pylon, pylon. Uh, which is actually a, a, a jar file. I don't think we have it anywhere, but let's just check if I say pylon. Of course not. <sighs> Hopefully this is the last thing we have to install. Open link in new tab. And here a lot of documentation and license and citation and I think we have to need, see the requirements and the usage. <coughs> Where is the download? Oh, maybe it's, it should be here. Julie, let's just have to uh, clone the uh, GitHub. Ah, okay, binary and source releases can be found. So you have to click on this link here, uh, <coughs> the light under the license and distribution. And hopefully we will have a binary. Oh yeah, this is what we need, the, the pylon 1.23. jar. I think uh, it's just simply, let's just try uh, right click and copy link. And what if we have, let's just make a, uh, now let's put it into the raccoon directory because that's, that's the simplest way to do in this time. So let's go into CD uh, raccoon build slash bin. And uh, we just simply do this, yeah. W get and then put the link, paste the link uh, between uh, quotation marks and then just press enter and it will download the, uh, the jar file. Is it working for you as well? Yes, it is. Okay, okay. So everything like uh, uh, on these things has to be done only by, by Chioma, of course, because uh, uh, she's now installing everything for you too. Uh, so, if you go back uh, to your home directory, uh, then we can also probably just simply say Java and Python. Want to? No. I don't think we can say just simply Python. Executable. Let me just check how is it. Because we have to provide this for uh, 
the unicycler as well. Usage. Mm -hmm. This is how we have to do it. Just trying to do this. Now, because it's not in, it's not there. Okay, let's let's see the unicycler, and if it will ask for the jar file, we will tell the program where is it. Okay, let's go back to the unicycler homepage, uh, and download it. So here is the installation. So hopefully we have everything. Uh, we will. Uh, I, I hope that we can just tell the program uh, where can it it find the, the, the pylon or pylon program. So copy this uh, git command line command. Uh, let's go back to our home directory. And oh, sorry. Oh yeah, just paste it like this. So it's like git clone and the unicycler git. Okay. Do you have it as well? Chioma? Yeah, so I did the... Um... Don't worry about the, 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 the pylon or pylon, if it's Downloaded, it's enough at the moment. We will find out how to tell the program. Where is it? Just do this git clone command in your home directory. Okay, yeah. Okay. And we have to go into the unicycler folder. CD again, please only Chioma do this. Sorry for every, everyone else today that it's oh, not too much to do today. So go into the folder yeah. and do this installation. Python free setup.py install. So just copy and paste this. And hopefully during the installation, we can tell the program where the, the pylon is if it asks. There is already a fatal error. Yeah, fatal error. For you too. But it's yeah. actually, uh, I didn't get back my console. That's a bit waiting for unfinished job. Okay. Yeah, oh, okay. We have the, that is the Zlib. That's the problem and not the ASM. Uh, so probably we have to something which is um, doing compression. I'll just quickly get water, one minute. Okay, okay, I will find out where do we have the Zlib and I think it's part of one of the uh, compression programs. I have to install probably the gzip or something, gzip devil. Yeah. And it's, this is only done by me again. Ah, okay, it's working for me. You can also start the uh, uh, completion Chioma. If the... I should run the last command. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will now work. And as you can see, it is now compiling all these different parts of the programs. So it is now creating all the executable files. And we will see if it is Oh, and it's done. 
or tools required by Unicycle were found. So it somehow found the, uh, the, the pylon as well. That's a, that's a good thing. And I think it has some kind of very simple data set. So we can test the, uh, the installation. There is a uh, folder in the Unicycler main folder, and that's uh, simple data where we have uh, long reads and short reads as well. So if you want, we can we can try it. I don't know how big is this FastQGZ file. If we have time, uh, this is act actually very small. Okay, so the usage, as you can see here, is to say Unicycler. Uh, minus one, and then you give the first file minus two, and you give the second file, and then the output directory. And actually, we are doing exactly the same what we did with the spades, but the unicycler is a bit more than spades. Uh, it can do uh, two things, uh, two extra things compared to spades. It is especially uh, good in, in combining short reads and long reads. So anytime you will have a nanopore or a, a uh, pack bio sequencing together with your short reads, it can combine these two. And also, even without the the, uh, the long reads, it will try to make the uh, uh, genome more complete. So if you want to go for a more complete genome, we spoke about this earlier. Uh, if you, uh, that, uh, for example, when we did the, the assembly with spades, we ended up with more than 100 contexts so the, uh, for a, a single step warrior genome. So the, the genome was very fragmented. So, uh, so if you would like to have a bit less fragmented genome, for example, because you are looking for, for genome organization, so you, you want to see how genes or how bigger pieces of the genomes uh, are uh, placing uh, within the genome, then you may try to tie, use the unicycler as well, which will try to make uh, a much more complete genomes. And also there is a, a visual, visualization tool, uh, which is called, uh, it, I saw it somewhere here, this bandage. I think I, 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 I check this bandage. I think you have to install it on your own computer. And at the end you will see things like this. So, uh, so what you see here on, on this figure, is how these internal repeats are making uh, the assemblers, uh, assembler lives much harder. So if you have the blue region here and there, then it will be assembled something like this. So you will see that, okay, I have a, a genome where probably this is a, a long uh, contig and this is going into this part or that part, which is, of course, if you just have a short read, you cannot really see. But uh, again, this is only uh, the, the reason why I wanted to show you the installation of the Unicycle is much more about how to deal with the installation of something which is much more complicated than just simply say Conda install and the program. So, as you remember, Anytime we installed anything before, it was a few minutes. Now we spent more than an hour just to install a program. And, and actually this is not, this wasn't extremely uh, complicated. There are some uh, complicated ones as well. So uh, don't, be, uh, don't be afraid if you have to install something like this. Now you know how to do it. <laughs> you can always go back and see how did we uh, put in uh, the, the, put the, the, the paths for the binaries into our environmental variable. You see how you can uh, troubleshoot the missing pieces. If you, if you are facing with something that we faced, for example, if you don't have GCC or you don't have this last one, we, we had problem, this, uh, Zlib or Zlib 
that age, uh, it's usually a bit better to ask the, the system administrator to install these programs because these should be installed uh, globally on the Linux machine. But at the end, you will probably end up with a, a working program and you can try. Uh, let's just go forward now because I, I want to go through at least the, the, the Shawil, which is a much easier to install program. And, and then you can play with this. I will uh, I, I just simply go into this unicycler folder. And I think we have, do we have the, yeah, we have the unicycler. That's interesting that we don't have actually the program called unicycler here. I mean, this one. Ah, okay. Okay. So you don't run unicycler, but you are using the unicycler runner.pi. So if you are here, you just simply say dot slash unicycler runner.pi and then minus one sample state, sample data, and then this first short read minus two and the second read. And I think if you say minus L like this, then you can also uh, include the, the long read, the low or the high depth one. Uh, but I don't want to do it at the moment because we have so many other things to do. But for example, what you can try if you, if you are interested in uh, is just use these pair of short reads with our original uh, Lenovo assembly pipeline, use it with the unicycler, but only the short reads, and then use the two short reads together with one of the long reads with the unicycler and see how, many, how the, um, the assembly will end up. Probably with the long reads, especially the long read high depth, you will have a much more complete genome at the very end, much less context. Okay, the other program, uh, which is way much easier to, uh, to install, and also I think we can, we can see how it is working, is the shovel. So if you Google just this thing in the Google, then we will go back to our uh, favorite uh, microbiology bioinformatician website, Thorsten website, and it is, uh, if, you, if you read through the whole thing, uh, it's, it's very similar to what we did before. So it's actually a complete pipeline to do a de novo assembly. And the reason why I didn't start with this is because, uh, as I, again, I, as, I, as I said before, I wanted you to see all the, the steps one by one first. But in many cases, probably this will be uh, a bit more reliable way to to run your assemblies, but it's also much slower. So if you if you go through, for example, just the dependencies, here you can see it is also using Flash, it is also using uh, BWA, we used both time, but it used BWA, we used the Flash for merging the reads as well. And if you go through the, the, the main steps, there is uh, a genome, uh, size estimation, which we didn't do. There is um, a FOSQ file size reduction. So if you have a, a too high uh, sequencing depth, then, then you are just using too many reads, uh, but, but for, for actually for nothing. So uh, it will be much faster uh, by using a bit less uh, sequencing depth. You don't really need more than 100x sequencing depth. It's also trimmed the adapters if there is any adapter remained uh, from sequencing. Uh, there is an error correction. 
We didn't do this, but actually uh, we used the spades for doing the error correction. Uh, this is how it will merge or glue together the parent reads. This is what we did with Flash, and also I think it's, uh, the, the shovel will do the same. Uh, it is using three different assemblers, so that means probably that the time that uh, is needed for the same assembly is at least three times more. So the space, the scassel and the mega heat is used, and of course, I, I think it will do some kind of uh, consensus from these, uh, and it will look for assembly errors probably from the consensus of these three different uh, assemblers. And then also try to make a bit more uh, longer context. So I think there is a, a test we can run. As far as I remember, there was some kind of test for the shovel. But there's a check, which at least we can do. And again, here we have the, the very uh, comfortable installation path uh, away. So again, I only asked Chioma to help uh, doing this. So just copy the conda line and paste it. Uh, be sure that you are in your in your home directory and just just paste it here. So this is the easy way to install anything again. Uh, and as I said, I don't want to go through and I don't want to run it this time, but I'm very happy if you use this program. Again, it's very easy to use. It's coming from the same guy who did everything very simple. So as soon as it will be installed, you just have to say shovel and then give the output directory. So minus minus out here, and this will be your output directory. And then minus minus R1 and minus minus R2, and you are giving the path to the files. So if you want to do the challenges, if you haven't done the challenges, for example, you can try to use this one as well. Uh, I am not sure that the shovel will like uh, the mixed uh, sequ uh, sequencing because I know that it's actually, I think it's at the very end somewhere. Uh, I saw somewhere that it doesn't really like mixed assemblies. Should I say yes? Is it proceed? Yes, just, just push enter and it will do its work. Yeah, so uh, it's only for ISO, so for, for single organisms. But I think it will work with the uh, mixed, uh, it, 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 it doesn't work with metagenomes. So with a lot of different mixed genomes together, but it will, it will be okay with the double sequencing I, I put up. And if you run this, prepare for having a long run. I can imagine that you can set uh, the CPUs. So always check for the options. I think, uh, yeah. So if you say minus minus CPUs, uh, you can say four. But if you don't see anything, then, oh, actually you should, because the default is eight and we don't have eight CPU cores. So if you run the shovel on this uh, show wheel, I don't know. Ibrahim, how, do you, how would you uh, pronounce this? Shovel? Shovel? I don't know. <laughs> Are you here, Ibrahim? He's not here. Okay. I think he's here. I'm here. Oh. It's yeah. uh, it's shovel, I think. Oh, okay, so I I was my pronunciation wasn't that bad. Well, I mean, I'm not the person to ask. This is not a real word, right? So you will refer. <laughs> they actually, I think it's uh, just like more or less like a brand name. Yeah, I I guess that it's it's somewhere at the very end. Usually, he is saying something why he he named the program like this. 
Lyosh, I want to ask uh, whether these uh, shovel uh, things can work on the uh, virus, on my virus data. Because you don't have, you don't have to your data. Uh, no, no this, is, this is all the Novo assembly. Uh, what you have to do is much more aligning your reads to a known sequence. So what's the difference like between the ANOVA assembly and like, if you know, like, uh, I know it's definitely there is a reference there, so it's you can align with. Yeah, yeah. So in the ANOVA assembly, the, the assembler just try to put together the, uh, the pieces without okay. any lead, you know, it's just try to find which short read is matching with which one and try to extend the short reads to make, to be adapt the context. So it's like, uh, the, I think the best analog is the De Novo assembly is like making a jigsaw puzzle. Without right. the most, that most means that if you use the assembly, it could have for more errors than if you use... Uh, it is definitely data. way much more. Yes. All right. All right. Yeah, it is always much more. So, uh, but also as we discussed before, there are the advantages of the Denovo assembly as well. So, for example, if you are, if you are not thinking about your virus, when you when you are sequencing your virus, you know that the virus genome looks like this, and maybe you will have a few snips here and there, but but you don't really expect any any big changes in your in your virus genome. But think about uh, Ibrahim's uh, Staphylococcus isolates. Uh, there are already like I don't know hundreds or thousands of Staphylococcus genomes uh, in in the RefSeq, Ref but maybe he's isolated from that specific uh, place. We'll have an extra plasmid, which was never there before. So if you are using any of those uh, few thousand reference sequences to find out your genome sequence and you don't have the plasmid inside, you will miss the plasmid sequence. And maybe that's, that plasmid sequence is extremely important because of uh, um, an antimicrobial resistance, for example. Uh, uh, we will see uh, in our next example in, in SNPY that it, can, it has to be handled uh, in a way if you are doing... Uh, actually, the SNPY is a good tool for you, which is our next example. So again, we won't uh, do the, 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 the shovel now, but again, if you want to uh, try it, please use it. It is now installed uh, for me, and I think it's also for you. So if you just uh, uh, type in shovel or shovel or shovel, yeah, and you can see how to... Is it, is it working for you uh, as well? Yeah, it's all done. So it is there. Please try it. Please try uh, on on the two uh, data files we had uh, in our scratch directory, CD per scratch or slash scratch. Uh, so in the data, I think, uh, that's raw data. Yeah, in the raw data folder, uh, these are the two FASTQ files, which are the the normal single genome. Uh, step for your files, so you can use this pair, or you can try with this one, which is a mixed sequencing, not a very mixed, just two genomes together. Okay. Uh, uh, really, what we installed today, we cannot really try it out during the course because it's just too long to run any of these. Uh, I really hope that we will be at least able to do the snippy. I think I think the snippy is not that long to run only for one single sample. Uh, so when you when you try this, uh, don't forget to use the minus minus CPUs as well. Uh, minus minus CPUs four because we only have four CPUs in this machine. But otherwise, it is very simple like this. Just give the output directory and the two input file names it will do everything for you. So again, I think uh, the, if we go back to, to Chioma's uh, very first question in, in the beginning of our course, 
that uh, there are so many missing assemblies from from her isolates. Uh, I can imagine that uh, if it's done in the Sanger, they have a, a very uh, reliable and robust pipeline, which works very well if your sequencing is, is perfect and nice and not mixed. And, and this is what I guess the, the shawl can be used very well as well. So maybe if you getting back your you're getting back your uh, sequencing without assembly. First, you should try the shovel. And if you see anything strange, uh, then, then you have to go into the details and find out what happened and why. Why do you have more than one genome or why do you have an error in your assembly, for example? And if you are that lucky that you also have some long reads, uh, I think the shovel can handle wrong reads as well, but I think it's it's better to do with the unicycler because it was actually designed for that purpose. And if you just want to realign something, then it is our next uh, task. And I think 20 minutes is enough for the Snippy. Uh, we will discuss Snippy uh, later as well, because that's one of the tools what you can use if you want to make a, a, a whole genome comparisons between many samples. But what we are doing today and what we will use today, it's only uh, checking one sequencing result against a reference, seek reference genome. So it's almost the same what we did before, but again, we are using a specific tool. So we don't have to go too far. Uh, Geoma, if you are on this site, in the shovel site, just go back to the uh, main homepage. And there we have the snippy here. And the good thing in this one, uh, that why, what we did uh, last time, uh, the bow tie is okay, but as soon as we are trying to uh, extract uh, variants uh, from from a BEM file. There are so much more tools for diploid genomes, and and this is actually written for haploid genomes, so prokaryotes. So it's much easier to to use for prokaryotes. And as you can see, uh, the usage again very simple. We just have to say snippy minus minus CPUs, then the output directory, then the reference sequence and the two reads. So it will be very easy for us as well. Uh, uh, we of, of course have to install first, but again, because this is from Torstein, the installation is very simple. So please, Chioma, do the same with me. Uh, the installation here. Uh, go back to our uh, home directory and ju just simply paste the snippy install command. There is also a check here. Oh, we haven't checked uh, the shovel installation, but I think it's okay. Uh, if this one is going for three minutes for this time, I think we have maybe a chance to see. Uh, yeah, if, if you have the same question, just simply say yes or enter and it will install everything. So as you can see, even the, even Snippy is depending on many other programs like we did with the Unicycler, but instead of uh, bothering us with the installation, it will do everything because it is installed by the Conda package manager. And it's done for me. Yeah, done too. Okay, and it's now here. So uh, let's uh, try with our uh, data. And I think everyone can try it, doing it because now we can uh, just simply run it on a single CPU. And while it is running, I will also tell you 
uh, what is happening uh, under the hood. So let's go to our own scratch directory, cd slash scratch slash your own directory. And because again, Snippy is executable from anywhere, we just say Snippy, not Snoopy, Snippy from here, minus minus CPU. I think that it's again, probably the default is eight. Let me just quickly check. Oh, it should be here. Minus minus CPUs, the default is eight. Let's just give it one and then it will uh, only use one CPU and then we can run, uh, run it in parallel, most, not, not just uh, one people. Uh, and if you go up, the next thing we have to give is the output directory. So just say minus minus out dear snippy out. Uh, so this folder, of course, will be <coughs> created in your own directory. You have to do the snippy. No, you don't have to do it. You don't have to make it. It will be created. No, your snippy dot out. Your snippy, your out, your out. The output directory. I don't think you you need it. Do you do you need it? I think it will be created if it's not. I'm yeah. just you wrote CP instead of snipping. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Sorry. Uh, and then then the reference sequence. Uh, the reference sequence. So we are now doing. Uh, Ibrahim, one of Ibrahim's uh, Stephorius isolates. The, my, the, the reference sequence was in our data folder called something GCF and a lot of uh, things after that. So this is what you have to give. So minus minus ref will be in a dot dot slash. So this is the, the scratch folder and within the scratch it's in the data folder and GCF just try to write in GCF and push the tab and it will autocomplete. So this is our reference sequence, uh, which is a, a step aureus reference sequence. And then minus R1, minus minus R1 and minus minus R2, R1. This is our dot dot slash raw data. And here we have, I think that two, two, One dot uh, and minus minus R two So these will be the uh, the input files. It's almost done. There is only one thing, and it is also said somewhere here so even even he says that it is important uh, let me just check if i will find it somewhere mm. Yeah, this one. So I, I think you may remember that last time when we uh, tried the bow tie, we also found out that not all the reads are aligning to to our uh, reference genome. And again, it it's also says here that sometimes there will be sequence which are not aligning. And there is an option called minus minus unmapped, uh, where you can put all the reads that are not uh, mapping to, to your reference genome. So if you, for example, if you have a, a novel plasmid, then everything will go into that uh, FASTQ file, and later you can use the novel assembly, as, as he said as well, to assemble something from that uh, data. So we can also say minus minus unmapped 
10, minus, minus. Unmapped, yeah. And just say that uh, we have to give a fine name here. Finding. And that's all. And as you can see, it will look for the old dependencies that happened in the very beginning. So it will check if the BWA, the BCF2, SAM2, GEO, everything is there where it has to be. And of course it is there because it was installed by Conda. And then it opens the files and go through all the reads, uh, I guess. Yeah, so as you can see, it, it says how many records are done already. Uh, and it will create a BAM file. So if we go back to the, the Snippy website, you can see what kind of outputs we, we will have. And hopefully we can look into them as well today. Oh, it's here. So there will be a, a tab file, which is a, a simple, like a, like a table on the variants, which are different. So again, what you see here is not a genome assembled, but a list of differences compared to a known genome. Um, the same thing, but a comma separated version, the VCF, I really hope we will have this VCF file because this is one of the uh, main file formats you will, you want to get back from a realignment. Uh, this is the variation, I think it's variation calling file or something like that. And we also, you also have the BEM file if you want to visualize the alignment and also the indexed. Uh, oh, <laughs> luckily we will have a FOSTA file as well. So we will have a consensus FOSTA file. This is what I gave you as a challenge in uh, with the empile up comment uh, last Thursday. Don't do this don't do that uh, much more do something like this because i think this is much better than that uh, version and i think there will be some gz file but I, i'm not sure that uh, these gz files will be created in the uh, new version let's see how it goes so how many of us in the program, let's see. Okay, it is running at least in two. Okay, Sam, two was Perl. Nice. There are many people running. That's good. Uh, is there any, any questions uh, why this is running? So, Jinji, for you, not for the uh, PCR sequencing, because I think the PCR sequencing is very straightforward, but for your virus uh, genome sequencing, maybe this is a good tool. But the problem is there, as far as I remember, you were also looking at diversity. Am I right? Yes. So, which means that uh, your your isolate your your virus pool may have many different genomes, so they are not having the same genome. Uh, so. Yeah, but the majority of them are the same. They like within like if I look at the whole genomic sequence of the virus, so in total it's around like uh, ten to like twenty thousand kb, but. I just mm -hmm. modify like a 19 base pace. I mean, in okay. terms of the whole genome. Okay, okay. So if you are looking for the whole genome and if you are looking for, for uh, mutations that are, uh, you know, like conserved or, or, or happened during your infection or something like that, mm -hmm. for that purpose, the SNPI is a very good tool, I think. Yeah, yeah. Realigning virus whole genomes because virus, 
should be haploid as well. All right, I used uh, the uh, read count of BAM, so the read count BAM. Yeah. Yeah, I can try this method to see whether there are difference. Yeah, or well, just simply because this is a bit, a bit easier to, to visualize and look through, it will also give you at the end, it will give you a, a nice table of, of specific nucleotide differences. So you don't have to look through big text files or you don't have to go through with the BAM view because it will have, you will have the uh, the variations in a in a separate file. All right. Any other questions? Why we have this running? Of course, you shouldn't use any of the programs we use today for any eukaryotic genomes. Uh, I'm not even sure that the unicycler or the shovel can be used for even small genomes because they are they are very specialized to prokaryotic genomes. Uh, actually, the the spades itself can be used, but as I told you, even the shovel and also the unicycler are much more specialized to prok prokaryotic genomes. Uh, so. So, for example, what I did for for Claire uh, when we sequenced the the fungus genome, we knew that it is not that big. It's a eukaryotic genome. It's a diploid genome, or I, I don't remember if it was a because there are haploid uh, single cell uh, fungus genomes as well. But uh, the spades can assemble very small eukaryotic genomes as well. But if you want to do anything with eukaryotic whole genome sequencing, that it's a, it's a completely different uh, way to do. Uh, I think we can go through one, one, one uh, gold standard, uh, for example, human genome sequencing pipeline. If you want, we cannot do any of the steps because they are just too, too long to do in life, but, and also I'm not sure that the server is capable of handling uh, the data. Yeah, the, the problem is that the, the, the whole genome sequencing files are usually quite huge for uh, big eukaryotic genomes. Uh, mine is almost finished. I think something is happening on, on mine as well because Ah, oh, yeah, the BWA is, well, SAM2 is running. So at least the, uh, the alignment finished. So as soon as you see that uh, all these uh, mem piece that lines are ended somewhere here, that means that the alignment is done and then uh, the SAM tools is just doing the BEM file and indexing the BEM file and extracting the SNPs. Mine is almost finished, I think, because it's now only working on the extraction of variations. So as you can see, it is way much faster than doing the Danovo assembly, even with our uh, simple pipeline what we did. Uh, it is a few hours. If you want to go through all the steps, I can imagine that the same stands for the, the shovel. And this is way much faster. Can you do this in multiple, you can run it on multiple files, right? Multiple fast key files. Uh, I'm not sure that you can run, uh, I mean, you can run for multiple files, but um, it is, you know, it's it's done with the Snippy Multi, and we will speak about that later. But actually, what is happening there, it, it, there is a, a separate Snippy run like this for each of them, and then it will just collect all the, the Snippy, inform, uh, the SNP informations at the end. 
So it is multiplying by the number of files you are uh, handling. Of course, you can uh, do this a bit faster. So if you use minus minus CPUs four, or if you are using a server with much more CPU cores, then you can use more CPUs and it will be much, be much faster even than, than this one. Uh, here we have a bit of waiting for the free base to finish. Uh, okay, in the meantime, if you, if you want to look for the BEM file, uh, I actually did a, a bit of uh, practice on the BEM view on this version and I found out a bit more about it. So uh, if you have the BAM view from, from last time installed on your laptop, if it's not, it's not a big problem. You can, you can install in time and just come back and check the same thing. And if you copied the BAM file last time, <laughs> which we did, if you haven't done, just look at my screen. Uh, so we also did this, uh, uh, genome realignment with bow tie. Actually, it's almost finished, mine, I think. Uh, and my BEM file is on my desktop. I just want to see, show you a few settings that makes a bit nicer your uh, alignment view. Uh, the BEM file is here. You always have to you have the, the BAI file right next to the BEM file. This is the index. It has to be there every time. And also we have the reference sequence in a FASTA file. So I'm not sure that uh, it's working perfectly, but let's see. So this is how you get the, the BEM view for the first uh, opening. So what you can do, first of all, you can uh, uh, clone this because you want to see more than one things uh, under each other. Uh, it is, it was somewhere. Yeah, mine is finished. Yeah, clone window. Sorry, it is here, clone window. So you have the same thing in two windows now, but then you can play with the bottom one. For example, you can show the coverage here or the snip marks. We don't have too many snips in this one, but, uh, but you can just show the coverage values here. Uh, here you can make this uh, viewing by paired. So then you can see that uh, which one is the pair of which read. So this gray line is connecting your two uh, short sequence reads and then you can see that they are really together. It's not extremely important here but as soon as you have a deletion or an insertion uh, then what you will see is that instead of having a few base pairs between your, I mean I don't know how many base pairs you have for example between these uh, short reads but the short read is about 150 base pairs so this can be maybe like 30, 40, 50 base pairs. If you have a, an insertion and you have the two reads in the two sides of the insertion, then you will just realize that, oh my God, I have like a, a kilo base between my two reads, which is not what you expect. And then you can think about uh, the insertion or deletion there. Okay, so for me, it is finished. And We can go into the snippy output folder and we have a lot of different files here. Again, if you do this, please go through the files, please check them. But what we have to see here is, well, I think we have to look into it at, at, uh, at least is this one, the, the VCF file, where uh, I think there are some header lines, but the header lines are always starting with double hash marks. But as soon as you are here, you will see here that uh, this is, for example, uh, I think it's an insertion. Mm, 
because I think instead of, or maybe it's an A deletion. Oh my God, it was, yeah, it's an insertion. So yeah, the type is here. So this is an insertion type. Uh, this is a snip type where I think maybe this is the reference and this is the, uh, uh, yeah, let's just go to that position. So I think the position is the second column. So this is 37,000, I guess. And it's not exactly the same BIM file as I'm looking at now, but I hope it go to that position. Uh, I want to go to that position on this one. And here, I want to view the snip. Ah, uh, it's not here. Okay, I think we are we are using a different dem file here, so that's the problem. Uh, I will I will find out a nice way to to show you uh, all these variations. But actually, this is what you want to see. Uh, where are these uh, snips are? And of course, you can go forward and you can annotate uh, what the snip is doing. So. This is not for today, but uh, I think we can go into the details how you can combine a GFF or a GBK file, which is annotated, so the genes are annotated, and the VCF file, and then uh, you will end up with, I think, if I remember well, it's a VEP file, uh, which is the variation effect prediction, which is in a simple case, it's only a SNP, which, uh, uh, doesn't affect the amino acid uh, coding because it's, for example, the third uh, position in the codon or it is outside of the uh, coding region. But if it is affecting, if it makes um, an amino acid change, then you will get back uh, the results as well. Uh, predicted results of that um, SM SNP change. Of course, the insertions are much more important. If you have insertions here, it's always uh, good to go back and see uh, if it's inside the gene or not, if it's outside or inside. You should also, also check your sequencing data uh, with BAMView to see if it's not maybe just a sequencing error. And this is what I think, this is what we will do next time. Uh, I will find out maybe a better program than BAMView and to show you how you can find these SNPs and how you can uh, find out their effects. And then I think we all can, we can just finish our whole genome sequencing parts and we can go to other topics. But it's, it's, it's already uh, more than 5 p.m. today. Uh, is there any questions now? Is, uh, is it running for for you? Oh, it's finished for everyone. Okay. So come back, check these files. Also, we are having, I think if we go back, It's, it was there, so in the output folder, in the SNP output folder, if you look at, we have these files here, SNPs unmapped are R1 and SNPs unmapped R2, uh, sorry, R0 and R1. Why do we have R0? Okay, you don't have to use anything else. So if you want to assemble the non-mapped part, which I would like to see, so I would be very happy to see what will be assembled from this. And I think uh, I, can, I can imagine that Ibrahim would like to see as well. Uh, so just use these two files as parent sequencing files for the Novo assembly. You can use shovel, you can use our own 
uh, small pipeline. This will be very fast because it's a very small file. So I can imagine that it will be assembled very fast. It's, it's one tenth of a usual uh, prokaryotic genome sequencing only. Okay. Uh, is there anyone who who plan to do the challenges and would be happy to discuss the challenges next time? Or did anything from the challenges? I had a disaster with the challenges because I was feeling quite pleased with myself and then realized I'd overwritten some stuff. So I'm having to go back and start again completely. So that's my next <laughs> activity is to go back from scratch and redo all the files we've done from the last couple of weeks. <laughs> these asters are very good because you learn yeah, quite, good yeah. from them. So I, 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 I think it's, it's a good way to, to learn. Yeah. Um, but anytime if you if you stuck, just just drop me a, a message or an email and I can I can check, I can see your folder, I can go into, mm -hmm. I can see what is happening there. But I think it's much better if you try. Uh it if you delete everything from your folder, you know, just from yours, just from the scratch slash yeah. folder and start everything uh, uh from, from scratch, it's it's sometimes worth it. Yeah. But if you want to do challenge one, I think it was challenge one to compare the de novo assembly mm -hmm. and the realignment. Then I would I would say that now you should do it with Snippy mm -hmm. uh, and shovel. Because with Snippy you have the so if you go back, oh let me just share my screen again. So if you go back to the Snippy output, I think you have the consensus fast as well. Yeah, I think these ones. Oops, uh, I forgot to copy. And I will just smps.fa. So this is this is quite something like the, the whole genome. And I think it is modified by the SNPs, as far as I remember, a version of the reference genome with all variants. In, I don't know how to spell this. Instant, instant, instantiate, instantiated. Maybe. Oh yeah. So this is all variants, and this is all the substitution variants. So the, the difference that between the two consensus foster file is that all the insertions and deletions are introduced into this FOSTA file, while in this one, only the nucleotide substitutions, only SNPs. So, so actually this is, this is what you want to uh, compare with the de novo genome and find out what are the missing parts. But you can also do it with assembling uh, the unmapped reads here. So I think if you if you want to do the challenges, uh, you will have a much better tools now. But I didn't want to help you with having with giving much better tools. So I hope that a few of you at least uh, struggled with <laughs> the challenges during the weekend. Thank you, Lars. Okay, if there's no, no more questions and no more problems, then I think we can, we can stop here. Uh, yeah. we will, we will, uh, thanks very much, Yoma, for helping me. So oh, everyone has all the programs. You don't have to install anything. You, should, you just have to try to use the programs.